Am I making sense to anybody? Amen. You know, he talks about the eldership of the church, and he uses it's a plural, it's a, a plural word. Elders keep watch over one another. Like even myself, I sit by myself to other pastors, both within our organization and outside the organization. I, I even submit myself once in a while to scrutiny for some people who might you might seem to think that they're outside the faith. But I'm really searching for something. Humble yourselves by submitting to the loving audit. Right? We don't like, I mean, you know what an audit means. Mm -hmm. yes. when, we, when we pray to God, Lord, search me. We're asking God to audit us. And that seems to be pretty simple for some people to just say those sort of things. But because we don't see him, we don't recognize him as sometimes as actually being there. You know, and, and this, is a, this is very scary because... Here's the thing. If I go to Sister Linda or if I go to, the, to, to uh, Brother Larry or, or somebody else, I say, you know, I need to ask you about something. And, and I say, I need, you, I need you to audit me. I want you to tell me. Here's, here's what I've been doing. Maybe you've been watching. I need you to audit me. I want you to tell me how I'm doing. And if, it's, if I'm out of line, I need you to tell me about it. I mean, there are a couple of people that are missing from our congregation right now, and I miss them more for this than anything else, aside from their fellowship or their friendship, amen? Mm -hmm. Because I don't have the people, as, as many as I would like to, to be able to go and say, look, if I'm out of line, you need to tell me. Amen. I thank God for some of the women that are here right now, because I can do that. If I'm out of line, and I thank God that many times when they thought I was out of line, I wasn't. Because, man, it would have been real embarrassing if I had been out of line, really. <laughs> right, Sister Margaret? <laughs> <clears throat> and the other thing you do, this is, this is the part now that you have to do. Remember the guarding your heart thing? From Philippians, you know, when you get God to guard your heart, but let me tell you, during this situation, when you submit yourself for an audit, this is where you guard your heart. You guard your heart from being defensive. You guard your heart from anger. You guard your heart from being dismissive. See, when you reach out to other elders, when you reach out to other church members, don't use that as a pretext of circling the leadership wagons. And that's what many people do. They start wanting to circle the, circle the wagons. If I can get these people to agree with me, if I can get the votes. The idea is to, to, to work to sustain love and compassion, even towards your enemies. See, when you meet with your disgruntled brother or sister, listen carefully. I, I've found over the years um, that even my most angry, most merciless critics, usually they've got a point to make. They got an axe to grind. It may not be exactly on point, but it's still there. It may be over, listen, it may be an overstated point expressed in immature and sinful ways, but they still usually are responding with something that needs to be faced, that needs to be addressed. So we keep watch over one another, amen? The Bible says that Jesus came for the Son of Man came to seek and save that which was lost. Men took the wrong path and don't know how to get back to the road. Jesus came to seek the lost and to take them back home. He wants us to become what? Finders of the lost. He wants us to love and to reach the lost regardless of the kind of people they are and the kind of lives they live. You see, tracking down stray members in many situations is probably one of the most difficult, least glamorous parts of being a pastor, an elder, a Sunday school teacher, a member of the church. I mean, you get kudos and respect from the church when you teach a class or preach a message or lead, lead a song 
You experience a lot of satisfaction from praying for members and, and, and exhilaration when you're part of a, of a team that makes some, I don't know, some historic leadership decision. Even sometimes it seems to be insignificant, but how many of you still love this carpet? Amen? Amen. Amen. But what are the personal benefits from confronting an adulterer or sticking your nose into a long-standing squabble between people? And who really wants to sit down and listen to an angry couple detail all the ways that they believe you and the church have wronged them? Don't we all have too much drama in our lives already? Yes. yes. And the question is, why jump into somebody else's mire? Why jump into somebody else's mess? What's it say on the board behind me? For us to embody, say embody. embody. To embody the gospel when we search out these wandering members, that's what we're doing. We're embodying the gospel. Jesus came to do what? Seek and to save. When we sit back and we say, well, if they really loved, if they really did this, they didn't, no, stop. While you were yet a sinner, while you didn't love God, he loved you. And he sent his son. The Bible teaches that we should keep watching and we need to be tracking those, those strays in, 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 and listen, in a Jesus-shaped way. Amen? The good shepherd came into this world. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. The Lamb of God came to die for unrepentant, sinning sheep just like us. That great physician, somebody say, praise the Lord, I need a touch right now. Yes, amen. He came to bind up those limping sheep, listen, those limping sheep, those sick and those who were broken by sin, he came to bind them up. He came to heal them in Jesus' name. And that Prince of Peace, you know what the Prince of Peace has done? He waded into our war-torn world. He waded into our torn-up lives. He came in, not just hit deep, over his head he came in. Yes. Amen? And we hurled insults at him. We struck him. We pierced him. And he did not even open his mouth. You're saying, what are you talking about now? <clears throat> we have insulted the Prince of Peace. And sometimes we insult, we insult him because we're being insulted. Because we, like sheep, have all gone astray. You know, Jesus didn't have to come. But he did. And when we take the initiative to insert ourselves, even though it costs us, we exemplify the very gospel <coughs> that Jesus preached. You shall know the truth. If that's what Jesus did, if that's what Jesus does, isn't that what we should do? Yes. Now, I know we're supposed to maintain that, what do they call that? Social distancing. Social distancing. I'm going to ask that you would do that. I want you to tighten up your ranks. Now, obviously, if you came here together in the same car, you stay together. But I want you to come within 16 of people this morning. Obviously, listen, some people, they're not too concerned about you getting close, but, but I, want, I want to join you this morning in prayer. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to use this as an opportunity before we go to prayer to give you a commercial. Um, this, uh, this coming week on Thursday, right, it's, it's pizza movie night. Yes. And uh, we'll be watching a movie called What If? What if God gave you a second chance? What if God gave you a second chance? What if he's giving you a second chance? What if that's what's happening right now? What if we're given, we're, we've been given yet another chance to become the people that God would have us to be?